Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. It is Thursday, October 18th. I'm Beth Stevens. Paul. Who are you? I'm losing my voice. I'm Paul Wontorek. <laughs> and we're here with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have our favorite redhead. Kate Baldwin is here. Big statement, though. Big Kate statement, Baldwin is here. It's, it's a favorite redhead. I mean, yeah, we love her. Okay. But there's a lot. I mean, there's three of us who work she's here. She's my favorite so redhead. Fine. Okay. I'm sorry. I love who her. else is a redhead? There are a lot of redheads. Okay. She's back at Feinstein's Fifty Four Below, she's and back she's always fantastic. With her show, how did you get this number? Okay. Um, anyway, can I we're share gonna... some exciting news? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so breaking news. Breaking news. <gasps> dun dun. So every Thank year, you for uh, you know, the, the Broadway League. What's the Broadway League, Beth? Explain that. I don't. In know. a nutshell. <laughs> yes, you do. <sighs> <laughs> I don't. Know. It's the, the Broadway League is the organization <laughs> of producers and theater owners that runs Broadway along with the American Theater Wing. They basically Wing. run Broadway. They are the official mm -hmm. organization. Along with the American And every Theater year Wing. they do a report and they, they poll They talk about goers, demographics and they poll. Yes, and they you get a little out card in your seat. Everything you need to know about people who go to Broadway shows. And for example, one of the interesting facts we found out this year is the, what you say? It's the youngest? The youngest? It's the, the average age of the Broadway theater goer is now 40 point something, I don't know how, how many months, and that is the youngest age, like average age since 2000. <gasps> That's crazy. Why do you think that is? So I think it's Hamilton. all because of Dervin Hansen. Uh, Dervin Hansen, you know, the, yeah. Stuff I, like that. Is it that? Is it Dervin Frozen. Hansen? Anyway, but they also, uh, they, we love this, our favorite page on the report is page 39, <laughs> because they always, they, they do a poll, they find out where do people get their information about Broadway. Yes. And Broadway.com is the number one. Again. Out of any newspaper you could think of, radio, or website, TV. I'm not going to name names, New York Times, I'm, not, I'm just, <laughs> out of anything, 36.9% mm -hmm. of people, random people, mentioned us. Not so random, but the theater goers. Aww. Aww. Really Thanks, guys. Um, that's Go fascinating. Away. Let's get to our top five. A pair of idols are coming to Broadway for the holiday season. I wonder which idols. It's Clay, Clay? and Ruben. This is OG. Oh. This is old school American Idol drama. Yes. Remember that year? Season two, right? Season two, yep, baby. Season two. Caitlin's very excited. Uh, so I excited. always wish they made one of those for like a from Clay to Ruben movie, like Justin oh. and Kelly did. But they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. No. But they are doing a Broadway holiday show together. It is called, ready? Mm -hmm. Ruben and Clay's. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, because Ruben won, right? I'm so aware. He gets to go first. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Ruben and Clay's first annual Christmas Carol Family Fun Pageant Spectacular Reunion Show. That's going to look nice on a T-shirt. Now give me the abbreviation. I, what? Right. Is okay. there one? No. Uh, previews <laughs> will start December 7th. Opening night is December 11th at the Imperial Theater. Very big, beautiful Broadway theater. Mm -hmm. This show, this is crazy fun fact, will mark the first time Aiken and Stu Stuttered mm -hmm. will perform Stuttered will perform <laughs> together on a, on a national stage. I guess Broadway. But it's the first annual, which means there will be a second annual. Heck I'm just yeah. guessing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But a, a national stage. It's the first time they've been on a national stage together since the American Idol finale in 2003. Mm -hmm. I feel like they probably sung like a... How is that a national stage? Don't it's a New York Mamas City Broadway stage. No? It's okay. a national stage, the <laughs> okay. Imperial Theater. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Clay Aiken, of course, didn't he win at Broadway.com on his choice? He was in Spam a lot. For Spam a lot. Mm -hmm. um, he was Sir Robin, and this is Ruben's Broadway debut, so welcome to Broadway. And it will be a three week engagement through December 30th. So come on, that's a, so fun, excited. That's a fun night of Christmas. Carols and hijinks <laughs> and American Idol stories. I don't know. It's from, from I'm going to call it from Ruben to Clay. Please do. <gasps> I love that. And a Twelfth Night musical is coming to our screens. Okay. This is exciting because I'm going to say two words that excite everyone. Spring Awakening. Duncan Sheik and Steven Sater are working on a Twelfth Night reimagining musical TV extravaganza. Mm. I just made that up. But uh, it's for Amazon. And it will do Shakespeare's classic. Of course, you know, it's a lot of mistaken identity in Twelfth Night. You know about Twelfth Night. Uh, most Shakespeare is, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. That's actually... True. Uh, but instead of the mistaken identity, they will have gender fluidity, which makes sense for Twelfth Night. Absolutely. Uh, and we don't know a whole lot about it, except for Mark Webb, who was the executive producer of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, is working on this as oh. well. And he knows a thing or two about musicals. Cool. Also, Insatiable's Lauren Gussis will be the showrunner, and more details to come. And you have a little bit longer to fly on over to London to catch this must see show. Okay, so everyone is talking about Everybody. company. So Stephen Sondheim and George Firth's company is back in the West End. It opened last night, yes. correct? Yes. 
I think so. And it is gender swap. So Rosalie mm -hmm. Craig plays Bobby, B O B B I E. Yeah. Booby, 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 Bobby, baby. Booby. Mm -hmm. Baby. Um, and uh, an upstart named Patty Lapone is in there. <laughs> Yes, she is. Yep, playing Joanne. And everyone's loving it. I mean, I have spoken to people. I met someone today who said it's the best thing they've ever seen. But we don't know how much they've seen. I'm just throwing it out there. So okay. this is a big... Marianne Elliott um, has directed it and apparently has reinvented the show in ways... Beth Hart, somebody told Beth you, they can never imagine it done the other way yes. again. It with will the, always with the man be a woman now. Bobby. So this is crazy. Anyway, that's not the news. We knew about that. The news is that it is now extended through March 30th 2019. And I'm going to go ASAP. Yes, let's go. And we found out who's going to be practicing there. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's cute. Thank Aww, you. That's We're talking cute. about Aww. a chorus line, which cute. is the upcoming gala staging. And it will feature Tony Yazbek, who's done it before, uh, Jay Armstrong Johnson, Robin Herter, Tommy Bracco, Max Clayton, Ryan Steele, and more. This runs. But who's Cassie? Robin, Robin Hurd. Robin Herder's cast. Herder, yes. Uh, Fresh off her Moulin Rouge triumph. Sorry, I'm just throwing that in. Wow, thank you. Uh, well, <laughs> this will run from November 14th through the 18th. Uh, it's, it's led by original co-choreographer Bob Avian and by Eric Lee, who's been keeping the flame alive for a very long time. Sounds exciting. Who doesn't want to see Chorus Line? I always want to see a Chorus Line. And save the date for Broadway's biggest night. June 9th. <laughs> That's all. That's it. And That's you're when out. the Tony Awards are happening, June 9th, at Radio City Music Hall. So now you know. Uh, not really that shocking. This is normally an early Sunday But what's June. the cutoff? That's what uh, we need to know. This is, what else do we want to know? They announced some eligibility. You know, they, they slowly roll eligibility news throughout the right. year. They announced the first batch of that. No big news. <laughs> Nothing really to report. Okay. The obvious people that are leading are leading. And Boys in the Band's a revival. Anyway. So there's not there's Only one lead in Boys in the yet. Band, which was Jim Parsons. Everyone oh, else is yeah. featured. Jim Parsons will be the lead, as Michael and all the rest will be featured. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, so, thank so you the back. cutoff. We need to know the cutoff. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's very important. The cutoff. If you have a broad, if you have a show that you want to try to get nominated for Tony Awards, and we you know have you do, to open it on Broadway by April 25th, 2019. So if company <laughs> wants to come in between March 30th and April 25th, you can win some Tonys. Uh, anyway, that's the cutoff, and then you'll be eligible, and then uh, nominations are going to come out, and everyone's and Beth and I are going to be really exhausted. busy and yes. predicting, and it's going to be really exhausting, and then June 9th you will know come, Kate and it'll be here, really right? fun, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then we'll wonder who's going to host, and there'll be a big opening number, and then mm -hmm. we'll live tweet it, and then we'll get some sleep. In July. I'm out. Um, I'm thank leave. you, Paul. Because there's a Caitlin, will you talk about here. her guest? Yes. Guys, Tony nominee Kate Baldwin is here because she's talking about her Feinstein's 54 Below solo show. We are so excited. She was most recently on Broadway in Hello, Dolly. And she has also been on Broadway in Finian's Rainbow, uh, Big Fish, Wonderful Town, Thoroughly Modern Millie, The Full Monty. She's done so much. And she's here with us right now. Be sure to follow her on social media at Real Kate Baldwin and leave all of your questions for us in the comments down below. Please welcome Kate and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, Kate Hi. Baldwin. I love seeing How you, you always. I'm good. good. You have a show tonight. I do. So we're going to consider Yikes. this your warm up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, ah, if you need, I'm good. I'm you're good. good. You're good. Okay. <laughs> if you need to sing any of your answers to people's questions, feel I'm free not because do that. this is a golden voice nope. wonder. <laughs> and yes, you are my favorite redhead. <laughs> and if Jesse Tyler Ferguson comes, I will just say he's my favorite male redhead or something. It'll be fine. I love him so much. We talk about sunburn every time we see each other. Yeah. I think that's all. It's real. That's the red thing. This is a, these are real reds. Real, red, real gingers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. So tell me about your show. It's called. It's called. How did you get this number? But you're not talking about phone numbers. I kind of loved the first way you said it because it was. <laughs> how did you get this? No, it wasn't like that. And you know, other people have, been, have said it a little <laughs> defensive, like, "How did you get this number?" You know. But um, <laughs> uh, in it, I talk about and sing the songs that um, are from the shows that that I am known for. So I describe it as uh, the songs that I belong to and the songs that belong to me. Well, and you've originated a lot of roles. So well, that's, well, yeah, I mean, not, not, yes. you've done other things too. But, but there are also songs from revivals uh, that I'm sort of responsible for reintroducing to the world. Things from Finian's Rainbow, things from Hello, Dolly. Mm -hmm. But then there's uh, material written for me uh, for the Michael John LaCusa show, Giant. Of course. The Andrew Lippa show, Big Fish. 
both the Wild Party composers. She's worked yeah, with both. I know. I know <laughs> they overlap a lot. Uh, and then there are a bunch of sh- um, stand or, or, you know, show tunes that everybody will know and love. But I have a different uh, arrangement for you. Do them. a little twist. Yeah, like, like there's New York, New York. Like that's that's that's, that's one of them. YouTube people, definitely. That's what I'm saying. Uh, there's a you could drive a person crazy. There's. <gasps> um, I tell the story of booking my first Broadway show, uh, and I intersperse, look what happened to Mabel in there. Can um, we talk about this for a second? Sure. So you, did you do the show, or did you just sing it as your audition number? Who, Millie? No, Mabel. No, I've never done You've I've never, done, never done Mac and Mabel. I love it so much, because I love all things Bernadette Peters. I mean, she is our queen. Yes, we will get to that, because you Duh. always talk about Bernadette Peters. I do, all the time. You Before Bernadette Peters went into Hello, Dolly, I know. you talk about you want to play Dot and Sunday in the Park. Can I you tell you a quick story about all yeah. that? Yeah, I want to hear about what happened so, when she went So the we had a, um, a dress rehearsal for Bernadette and Victor and for them to go into the, sh- into the show because they joined us for six months. And yes. And it was wonderful. And, um, and Bernadette came up to my dressing room to say hello uh, right before um, places. And I'm sitting there in my sweatpants and drinking tea and t- look like nothing. And she's like, aren't you going to get dressed? And I was like, oh, well, I, uh, and she makes me super nervous because I love her so much yeah, and I know so much about her. And so I was like, well, um, I actually don't start getting ready because I, Irene Malloy doesn't hit the stage for like the first 45 minutes. So you have time. I have a lot of time. And you guys have got to do the, uh, the overture and then you have to do uh, Call on Dolly. I put my hand in. Then Victor has to sing It Takes a Woman. And then you've got to do Sunday in the Park with Ju- You said that? You did not. You've got to do mm-hmm. Put on Your Sunday Clothes. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I totally did. Oh and she smiled at me. And then she left. <laughs> <laughs> and she never spoke to you again the whole time she was in the show. No, no she's she so lovely. knows I love her. Aww, she knows that's I love hilarious. her. So, I mean, she was wearing a bustle. She was wearing a boater. That hat, is, I mean, that show is the most important thing to me ever. And, oh, uh, of course. Yeah, I wanted to die. But <laughs> since then, uh, we've, 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 we've become better friends. She really? T- she texts me. She texts you? Mm-hmm. You're, you've got Burnett's number. I'm how did you get this number? <laughs> how did you get this number? I want to know. it's very useful. It's very useful. Yeah, how did you get this phone number? How did number? you get Bernadette's number? It will be the next show where you only sing Bernadette songs. Sure. I, I'm Actually, down. there's quite a lot you could work with there. Uh, yeah. And you're in the right range. Okay, so <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. So last year at this time, I was thinking you were invited, because you're so fancy, to Bette Midler's Halloween party. Hula-ween. Halloween. And you were, what were you again? Well, the theme was the Garden of Eden. Because so it's for the New York Restoration Project, which Bette Midler is th- started. Yeah, green so spaces. It's about green spaces and Correct. gardens and things. So Correct. you were, what was, were you? I was Eve, sort of. <laughs> Eve. A little naked. Well, no, no, no. I was very naked. sparkly, and you had an apple. It was very sparkly, and I had a, a snake from Amazon.com that we sewed onto the dress, and then is that really where it came from? Yeah. Oh my god. And then there was an apple, and but we beaded the crap out of it. We we bedazzled it all. That's amazing. I say we, but like Eric Winterling did it because he's a genius. <laughs> what are you wearing in this show? Uh, <laughs> Just uh, costumes for a second. I'm wearing I'm wearing a suit because here's the, what my thing at 54 below. There are people who sit like so close to you yes. and like right down there, and I get they're nervous. Below, but they're beneath you. They're below you. It, at no, they're below. just right in front of you, and they could see your business high, if you you know if you wear a dress. Mm-hmm. And I'm not about to do that, so um, I always wear a jumpsuit. Usually, um, my friend texted me the other day. He's like, "Can't wait for jumpsuit Tuesday. What are you gonna wear?" Like, and gave me like all these options. And like one of them was like a ninja thing. You know? Oh, yeah, anyway, that's a good idea. People, uh, so I love a jumpsuit. And so this okay. is not a jumpsuit, but it is a is a I call it a I'll call it a pantsuit because, because I've, I've been stalking you on Instagram I, as you I do. Love and you, it's Gold Lemay is the one I saw. It is Gold Lemay. I mean, if you're gonna do a show, <laughs> and you have a choice of fabrics, <laughs> you that's right there. As an it, option. It spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to go for it. People, it got a round of applause when I got on stage. We're going to really get to fierce. all your questions. I know that everybody's freaking out. <laughs> I know. I know. It's K-pop. I know, you guys. But <coughs> let's just tell everyone where, when they can see this show. Because they oh. can see it tonight. Yeah. Because now she's warmed up. Right. Um, tonight, I think there are like a couple. There are, uh, there are stand, tickets left. Standing room only. Sure. There are tickets left for tonight. Tomorrow is sold out. 7 but o'clock tonight. Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow, tonight, t- tomorrow sold out. But um, Tuesday, October 30th at 9.30 p.m., there are tickets available for that one. Awesome. So you can come to that one. Okay. We're going to get to all of your questions <laughs> because I don't want to hog the guest, although I kind of do because I love her so much. Yes. 
Sure thing. Okay. Tell us what yes. everyone's asking. So how do you choose which songs to include in your solo shows? Obviously, to this one kind of had a theme, but yeah. how do you decide that theme? Um, how do I decide on the theme? Like, the last show I did two years ago was all pop music, so I wanted to try my hand at my favorite um, pop singers like Fiona Apple and Ingrid Michaelson and Elvis Costello, and so that's that was the sort of guiding principle of that show. Mm -hmm. And then now I wanted to really sort of, because of Hello Dolly and because I met so many uh, people, new fans and people who are new to me, I'm new to them, I feel I, I felt like I wanted to reintroduce myself oh, to people um, who may not have known anything about me because I do shows that don't last very long. Um, Stop so it. It's true, but so I wanted to like give them a, a give them a taste of you know what has come before, and that's that's how I, I chose the songs. Yes, I don't need a roof is in there, you know. Howard Fancy Bacamora is yes, in there. You, you have know, to get so. the classics in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love give that. Give the people what they want, Kate yes. Baldwin. Yeah, there's a song about that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Robbie asks, who's your favorite diva whisperer? <laughs> it's hmm. you, Robbie Rizal. It is. How dare you? <laughs> how dare you? Robbie wants to get a bit, uh, me a, a t-shirt that just says, how dare you? Because I say that to I him like all, it. every day. He's the best. Let's he's, define diva whisperer, please. Well, he's, he's directing my show, and he directs a lot of ladies. Does he have and to manage you? No, I don't think he does. Mm. We just make each other laugh a lot. <laughs> we really do. You know, and he, he sort of pushes me to go, f go further with uh, the jokes, because for <laughs> me, if you're if you're talking between songs, it better be funny. Yeah, it's got to be funny. Keep that in mind tonight when you. I when know. You go to the yeah. Show. So laugh, <laughs> laugh, people. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please laugh. <laughs> uh, Alec asks, "What has each role you've played on Broadway meant to you?" Alec, wow. that's a big question. That's like going through big. the whole resume, but I'm going to ask you about one in particular. Yeah. Okay. Because there was recently a reunion of Thoroughly Modern Millie. Yes. And you were there. Yeah. And of course, you were in the ensemble, uh -huh. and you were an understudy as well. Yeah. So tell me what that experience was like going oh back. Oh my god, it was so much fun. What yeah. a great group of people. It was a fabulous group of people, and it was so much fun just to sit there and listen to it all again, and to think, wow, this is really good. <laughs> like, I, you know, when you're inside of it, and you're, I was with it from uh, its out-of-town tryout in La Jolla wow. in 2000. So I saw another version of it. I mean, I. It went through different millies, and then Sutton Foster took yeah, over. And we rearranged sure numbers. Yes. We like put the speed test before the speakeasy, but before, originally it was a different. Like uh, it was, it, it you was saw a the whole real, development. Yeah, so so to sit there now, sixteen years later, and look at it. I go, oh wow, it's really, it holds up. And it it's was just so fun to see everyone together. And it was. of course, you were in the ensemble and now you're a Tony nominated star. That's a pretty big leap right there, just to see what, you know. It I'm took a saying, while. It, it, no. <laughs> I mean, it didn't happen. I'm overnight. not saying it was overnight, but it was just so it wonderful to see, it. like, beginning. Well, yeah, like I Casey mean, Nicola, Casey Nicola and yes. I came out and did our scene, and mm -hmm. it was crazy because there he is. I mean, it, what does he have five Broadway shows running? I think. Yeah, he, he's just in he charge of Broadway. I think. But like I said, next to Noah Racy, who you yeah. know is choreographing and starring. You know, what I mean, like I, I just I'm amazed by all of the and and honestly, working on Forget About the Boy and looking at all the women in in uh, who are sitting at the desks and tapping still and like mm -hmm. we all have children we all have homes we all have you know i yeah. mean like you're all grown-ups now we're grown-ups now and like we were such but you still got it baby. we were such fetuses at that point <laughs> you know what i mean like so not our undeveloped and who am i and now everybody is who they are and it's it's th it's it was a thrilling night I loved but it. to get to the question is there something out of yours because i don't think we can go through every credit is there something out of all the shows you've done especially on broadway that yeah. Is my favorite? Yeah, that you always think about. I think about Giant a lot yeah. because Giant um, is sort of has a, a social conscious consciousness, and it tells a story of a marriage um, of people with two very different um, opposing views: uh, a conservative viewpoint and a progressive viewpoint. So, mm -hmm. and there were two people who loved each other and managed to stay together. and And I think about that when I when I think about the world nowadays. Beautiful show. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, Daniel Danielle asks, any songs that you're planning to sing but you end up having to cut from your set list for this show? Uh -huh. I'm releasing it right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I was going to sing a country tune um, from a show called Songbird I did off-Broadway three years ago um, called Small Town Heart that my friend Lauren Pritchard wrote, and it's gorgeous. But we were running long, and uh, I needed to cut something, and I had done Small Town Heart in uh, my previous show, Extraordinary Machine. 
So unfortunately, I had to let that one go, sadly. Bummer. Sorry. Bummer. What a downer. Yeah, that's Thanks good. for the question, guys. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's a good, it, in, you know, inquiring that's minds want to know. That's good to know, know what you are planning minds now. Totally. Know. Get an insight. Totally. Yeah. But we can end on a fun one. Great. Okay. Sure. What is the most exciting thing about having a solo show? The interaction with the audience. I was telling a story about Hello, Dolly uh, on Tuesday night about um, a man who fainted in the audience, and we had to stop mm. the show. And it was a literal, is there a doctor in the house moment? And a woman in the audience goes, I was there that night. <gasps> and then she wow. you know, she talked about, from the audience perspective, seeing three doctors get up and try to go revive the man and saying, that's my dermatologist. So like, wow. it's hilarious. And so that's, that's what's fun about a place like 54 Below, is that you get to be right there with, yeah. with everybody, and they get to talk to you, and, and you get to talk back. It's fun. So have you texted Bernadette and invited her to your show? She's in Sicily this oh, week, so she can't she's come, but oh. she might come on the 30th. Oh, just asking. <laughs> We're super fans of you, Kate Baldwin. Thanks. Thank you for coming. And guys, you've got you've to go to 54 Below and see, let's say the name of that show. How did you get this number? I love it. I love it. <laughs> Caitlin, will you take us on out? Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and leaving us a nice review over there so more people can hear us. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Jim Fingal and John Degata about who are going to talk about how their true real-life story inspired the new Broadway play, The Lifespan of a Fact. <laughs>